Hello, my name is Dr. Robert Frank. I'm an infectious disease physician, and I'm the head physician for the COVID-19 vaccine research trials we're doing at Cincinnati Children's Hospital. And first of all, I'd just like to thank you very much for volunteering for this trial, because without you, we never could do this very important research. And so I know that you've already received the informed consent document, but what I would like to do in this video is to go over some of the highlights to help you understand a little bit better what we're asking you to do. After I'm done with the video, you will then be um, talked to by some of our research staff to allow you to ask any other questions and to go over in detail the study visits. So now what I'm going to do is go over, to, go over with you um, the highlights of the informed consent process. So first of all, just a little bit of background around COVID-19. COVID-19 was first recognized in China in 2019, and that's why it is called COVID-19. It is now spread throughout the world, and in the United States, as of July 20th, there were 3.6 million cases and 145,000 deaths. The first step of any research project is to have you read and sign an informed consent document. In this document, we will explain to you why the study is being done, what you will be asked to do, the potential risks or benefits of being in the study, and how long you will be in the study. After reading consent, we encourage you to ask questions. You can choose whether or not you want to be in the study. You can change your mind at any time and can stop being in the study. And we will do our very best to protect your private information. So the initial steps will be for you to come to the clinic and meet with a nurse. The nurse will review the consent document with you and answer any questions that you have. You will be asked to sign an electronic form of the consent document, and then a copy of the consent will be sent to you by email for you to keep. So why are we doing this study? Well, really, we need to do this to test if the vaccine against COVID, one, is safe, two, if it stimulates our immune system against the infection, and three, if it protects people from getting infected with COVID-19 or called an efficacy study. So a little bit of a background about this vaccine. What we're looking at is what's called an mRNA vaccine. An mRNA is the genetic material our bodies or any really living organism uses to replicate our genetic material. For this vaccine, scientists have isolated the gene for the spike protein. And the spike protein is what we think is necessary for COVID to establish an infection. So for the vaccine, mRNA of the spike protein is what will be used as the vaccine. The mRNA will be taken up or brought into our cells and then our cells will make the spike protein from the RNA that is injected. After the RNA is injected, it is degraded by our body. So there's no long-term RNA from the virus in your body and there's no chance that the vaccine can give you COVID. So what do we know so far? We've already completed a phase one study with this vaccine. And phase one is the first stage where we're doing uh, evaluation of safety and a little bit about immune response. And we usually have around 100 people in the study. So in that study, we had for every five people, four received vaccine and one received placebo. This is what's called a placebo control study. And the results were very encouraging. The safety of the vaccine has been good and if people were getting any side effects, and most weren't, but if they were getting any side effects, the most common have been headache, fatigue, and fever. This is a two-dose vaccine regimen that you will get a dose 21 days apart. And what we've found is that the likelihood of fever may increase after the second dose of vaccine. The other very exciting thing is that the immune response has been excellent and may be even better than after a natural infection. The results of these studies have been submitted and will be published soon, and hopefully we'll be able to give you the paper by the time that you'll be enrolling in the study. These encouraging results have allowed us to now move into phase two and phase three studies, which mean more people so that we can better understand how well this vaccine stimulates our immune system and protects against the virus. So what we'll be asking you to do, the study procedures for this study will want to be collect information about your health and medications that you take. We will measure your height and weight and temperature each visit. On the first day, 
and 21 days later, you will receive a shot of vaccine or placebo. Neither you nor I will know if you receive the vaccine or placebo. However, in an emergency, we can't get that information. A nasal swab will be collected before each vaccination and blood will be collected at each of the seven study visits. You will be asked to keep a diary of symptoms, if you have any, for the seven days after each vaccination. We then will ask you to contact us if you have any symptoms that may be COVID related so we can decide if you need an unscheduled study visit. So one of the important things to know is this study will cost you nothing to participate. We also uh, would pay for any care needed to treat an injury from being in the study. You also will be reimbursed for your time, travel, and inconvenience for the time it took to be in the study. We will provide you a study visit and reimbursement handout at which the nurses will go over in detail so that you can see what will be required at each study visit. As far as for the benefits of the study, if you receive vaccine and the vaccine is effective, you could be protected against COVID. However, it is possible that there will be no direct benefit to you. But at the minimum, you definitely will help scientists learn more about vaccines against COVID. So what are the possible known risks? First, as I mentioned, is the reactogenicity from the vaccine. What we have seen is that if people are going to get symptoms, they seem to have fatigue, headache, and fever, although this has not been common. And if they have those symptoms, they typically have not been lasting more than a day. Other things as possible from any vaccine is an allergic reaction. We are going to be giving you a shot so that at the site where you get the shot, you may have some pain or bruising. And then from the blood collection, you may have some pain and bruising at the site where we're collecting the blood. The risks of the nasal swab is discomfort and potentially a small amount of bleeding, although that would be extremely rare. We also have the possibility of loss of privacy, although we are very careful of how we handle your confidential information. One very important thing that I want to make clear to you is that your participation in the study is voluntary and that at any time you have the right to withdraw from the study and there will be no penalty and no one will think badly of you from withdrawing. And that at any time during the study that you have questions, please call us so that we can answer them. You will be given a handout that will have the information for how you can contact us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Thank you very much.